where's Corey now? Well, we've flown all the way across the country to Cambridge, Massachusetts, where we're on the MIT campus. And there are a lot of things that we could do on the MIT campus, but we are interested in particular in the age lab because this module is on the effects of time on physiology, so aging. And they do a lot of different things here in the age lab, like this car that we're in, Miss Daisy. They investigate how older drivers move throughout the car and where they look and how their response time is. They work with corporations and industry and academics and students in order to study the impairments that occur with aging and to design new products that will help that process. But we are interested in particular in Agnes, Age Gain Now Empathy System. It's a suit that's going to give this healthy, young, athletic person the feeling of aging. So some of the impairments associated with aging. So changes in his manual dexterity, changes in his joint flexibility, in his vision, um, and he's going to fatigue more quickly with the weighted vest. So he gets to experience what it's like to age. And I think it'll be a very interesting process. And then we're going to use that to discuss some of the things that happen with the aging process and how we can prevent them in certain cases. So you ready? I'm very curious. I can't wait. Good. Let's do it. <laughs> Life expectancy is about 30 to 40 years longer than it was 100 years ago. But we have yet to invent what we are going to do to fill mm -hmm. that time in. So this is Agnes, Age Gain Now Empathy System. Um, and basically what Agnes is, is a tool that we developed for our students and for companies we work with to give that aha moment of what it's like to do the simple things that we take for granted, getting in and out of the car, going shopping, opening up a pill bottle or a box. And so we've got a variety of things that my, my colleagues here in the lab have designed to replicate that, that tightening of neck that uh, happens, unfortunately, in our 30s and 40s if we don't stay as sharp as we uh, once did. So we've got various straps and harnesses and the like to replicate the, the feeling of stiffening joints around arthritis. But this is not destiny. One of the, the teachable moments we learned about Agnes was that while we were using it as a tool to give the approximation of a 75, 80-year-old woman behaving badly with diabetes and osteoarthritis, this is also a teachable moment that with behaving well and eating well, exercising, that you can push off what may be considered the, the destiny of various comorbidities. How well you live tomorrow in your old age is how well you treat yourself today. You step into there, and step into there. <clears throat> I hope these fit you. So the more foam that you have in shoes, the less proprioception you have, less feeling that you have in terrain. So we have been using these knee braces. I feel a little bit, oops, there it went, okay. We put gloves on uh, to simulate the decreased sensitivity to touch. And particularly as we get older, we, we, we don't hear high frequency sounds. What? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, you have to call Carlos. Damn technology. <laughs> I actually can't remember why I called you. <laughs> I gotta go pee. Let's go explore this city. wonder if there are any cute girls in Boston. There's nobody in here. I have to move my entire body to <laughs> see what's going on behind me. I'm pretty noticing. I mean, uh, I just made different choices walking out here. Like what? Normally, there was a little median there. Mm -hmm. Normally, I do a little hop skip on top of it and just blow right through it. I walked all the way around. The ground is pretty unstable. Uh, you know, I noticed it was a stressor for me to get across the street in time. Thank you. 
Can you even see the light? It's I, not green. I can see the light. Okay. But these people keep blowing through it, huh? That's because they can get across faster and they can jump out of the way of cars. You can't. I can see this person over here doing a little giggle. <laughs> I, saw, I saw that. <laughs> Makes you feel like you're 75 years old. It's an aging suit. I aged 50 years today, my friend. Hold on to your youth while you have it. Yeah, the crosswalks. Where's the button? Is there a button? Yeah, there's a button. Oh, time to go. Technology. <laughs> All right, let's wait to the trap. Hey! It's green! Hey! It's... Hurry, hurry! Let's go! Oh, you had a couple seconds to spare on that one. All right. This one's a Frank Geary, right? I actually haven't even noticed them. I hadn't looked up. Can you see it? Wow. That's so... interesting. Uh, it's pretty hard to see. Uh, there's some funky stuff going on on the right side of that building. I don't, I don't know. I assume I have to wear this suit for a week. So. It's not that I can't do anything. It's that some things, just because they're such a pain, I, don't, I wouldn't want to do it. Yeah, well that's why you have to stay active for your whole life. So can you imagine exercising? Uh, I imagine it's a struggle. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think? Should we give it a try and see how these impairments impact your ability to exercise? Because we know that exercise is so good for you in changing the trajectory of aging. And so, you know, you may as well start now. Start exercising. So you think if I do a little exercise, I might be able to uh, improve some of these deficits? Well, let's check it out. All right. I'm so damn. we're at the MIT track right now, and uh, we're going to see if you can run a little bit. does not have an A in It's changed. Maybe 10 years ago, she would have been the average 75-year-old. I don't think she's the average 75-year-old now. I think she may be the average 85-year-old. She is ageless. She represents impairments uh -huh. that we commonly see nope. well, in here. older age. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. You're looking great. Thank you. <laughs> we are back here in Palo Alto, California at the Stanford track, and I'm here with Bill Kasperi, who is a sprinter extraordinaire. He's 79 years old, and it does not look like he's wearing the Agnes suit. So when he's done with his workout, we're going to sit down and talk about his secrets of healthy aging. I'll see, see you in a minute. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. What got you into sprinting, and what drives you to continue? And I remember the day well because I was sitting in front of my TV watching the 1968 Olympics, and I had a cigarette in one hand and a beer in the other, and I'm watching all these outstanding athletes, and I just I got mad at myself. And so I put the cigarette out and I crumpled up the pack and threw them away. And I told myself, okay, you're going to go down to the track. I lived by the San Carlos High School track at the time. And you're going to go down there every day for two weeks. You're going to make yourself run four laps. And at the end of that two weeks, you can quit. And I did that and I, I never stopped. And so for the next 37 years or so, um, I did a lot of trail running and a lot of road running, but I always had this love of the sprint. One of the things that, that I've noticed as I've gotten older is that people seem to think that easier is better, and they'll go out and they'll buy this machine to do something that they could do, you know. Um, I still, when if I want to dig a ditch, I don't go get a machine, I'll get out my pick and shovel. I still cut up my own firewood, and I do that because I, I actually enjoy it. It makes me feel good, you know. 
they think old, they'll say, well, you know, I just turned 65, so I, you know, I can't do that anymore. Well, but I know guys that are 80 that are doing it. It's, that's the attitude part of it. I was talking to a lady um, in an insurance office, and um, she was telling me how, yeah, she backed her car into this pole a couple times, and she said, because I, I can't turn. She says, um, it's just hard for me to turn. Well, I, I know she wasn't close to my age. And so I said to her, I said, um, well, you know, every evening I just do this back twisting. I said, it takes me five or ten seconds, that's all. Mm -hmm. just, just a little bit like that. And she kind of looked at me, oh, I don't do that stuff. And all I could think was, keep backing into the pole. <laughs> so how old do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, about 79. <laughs> no, it's, again, it's like, um, I don't think of it as old. We think, oh, you're, I'm old now because of this or that, and, and we put a number on it. My dad was... Um, when he turned 65, he was designing a power plant in Korea, and they walked up to him on his birthday, 65th, and said, uh, Sorry, John, um, we have to take you off the project. You're too old now. And he, <laughs> what do you mean? Yesterday I wasn't. Today I am. And it's that, it's, it's that whole attitude. I think that's part of what should change in our culture, is that attitude of that old is, means you can't do anything anymore. My goal is to outlive all the guys faster than me. <laughs>